Hi guys, welcome to my classroom. My name is Christine and today we will be covering fire idioms. So these are English idioms and I'm going to be sharing with you my top five fire idioms that I was thinking of that we use a lot in American English. So I have a lot of Asian friends, specifically Korean friends, and a lot of them struggle with these English fire idioms because our idioms here, they are not literal. So when you see things with fire, nothing is on fire. Nothing, there's nothing in danger when we use this in English. It's all expressions. So what I'm going to be doing today is teaching you how to use them. And so you'll know the difference when you hear them in conversations and on the TV. So you know that nothing is actually in danger. So first one is play with fire. So when you hear this in um, Korean, maybe you think that I think that there's an Korean expression um, to actually play with fire. And that actually means that you're looking at fire. Maybe you're staring at a fire. But in English, that's not what it means. It means that you're doing something dangerous. And so um, I'm going to draw here something that I'm going to draw here a little um, crossbones in America. That means it's dangerous. So it's also an X. So it means you're doing something dangerous. Um, a lot of times when we use it in conversations with friends, maybe you're dating a girl that's a little bit crazy. Um, your friend might tell you, you're playing with fire. You're doing something dangerous because you're going to regret it later. So playing with fire doesn't mean you're actually playing with it in English. It just means you're doing something that is a little bit dangerous and you're going to regret it later. So probably don't try it. So that's the first fire idiom. Next one is on fire. So when you look at this literally, it means that something is on fire. There's a fire there. But when we use this idiom on fire in English, it means that something's doing really well. It's doing so well um, that um, it's successful. So I'm going to draw a person's face. He's happy. And instead of eyes, I'm going to draw little flames. This is flames. I hope you can tell. Um, but these are flames for his eyes. And so we, what you can say for him is that he's on fire. So maybe um, a soccer player, maybe some of you who like watching soccer, your favorite athlete while you're watching the game, you can tell your friend he's on fire. That means he's on the field, he's doing great, he's getting all the passes, he's passing well, he's also making goals, he's on fire. So that means he's being really successful and he's doing everything well. He's doing everything efficient, efficiently. He's doing great. So when someone's on fire, it's not a small little success, like a little flame. It's really a big flame. So this person is doing very well. They're successful. So I'm also writing the word success just so that you guys can remember. So my next idiom um, is a little bit more um, specific. You have to use these maybe on certain situations. A lot of times in English, we use this maybe in, during a performance. Um, so let's say you went to your favorite singer's concert and um, your, this is a mic can't tell. So you went to your favorite singer's performance and the um, whole performance was great. The audience was going crazy and so when your friend asks you, the, asks you the next day, how did the performance go? How was the concert? You can say, the singer set the stage on fire. So the sentence I have is that the singer So the singer set the stage 
on fire. So that means that the ambiance, the energy, everyone's excitement was really big. Everyone was enjoying it. It was really exciting. And so you can say that the singer set the stage on fire because the stage had so much energy. Um, another thing you can say is maybe that maybe you're going to karaoke or going, you're going to Noreba and you're with your friends and everyone's enjoying it and you're singing a song really well. You can say that I set the room on fire because you're in a room singing a song. You set that Norebang room on fire. So I set the room on fire it means that everyone ex was excited, everyone was happy, everyone was enjoying it. So number four, we have two more left, is put out a fire. So we've been talking a lot about setting fires, having fires. None of these have to do with arsony, guys. So no one's actually putting fire, no one's actually setting things on fire. So just to let you know. But now we have one that's actually extinguishing a fire in its literal meaning, to put out a fire, to extinguish it, to make it go away. Um, so, put out a fire. So, all of these fires mean, all these other ones, one through three, is having a fire going on. But now we're putting out a fire. So, when you put out a fire, when you're having it as an expression in English, it means you're trying to get rid of a trouble. Um, you're trying to control something. So, just like a firefighter, so I'm going to draw a firefighter hat here. Excuse my drawings, guys. I'm trying my best. So this is a fireman cap, at least in America, it kind of looks like this. So, I hope you get it. So you're kind of playing a firefighter here. You're trying to control, you're trying to do some damage control, so to speak. So, um, a lot of times when we were young, we would make a lot of mistakes. And so what our parents had to do is that they had to fix the problems for us. And so, what you would say is that a lot of times I ruined a lot of things at home and so my parents had to correct it. They had to put out my fires. And so what that means is that someone else, or in that case my parents, had to correct my problem. You can also say this about yourself, saying, oh my gosh, my friend screwed up this situation and so now I have to put out her fire. So, the fire pretty much means a problem. And so, you have to be like a firefighter and put out the fire, put out the problem. So, this one we actually use quite a bit. Um, so, just remember that this one, you're putting out a fire, you're correcting a problem. So, my last one is spread like wildfire. Um, I would say that this one is used a lot in conversational settings. So what this means, um, some of you guys might not be familiar with wildfire. Um, you guys might know about the word wild. Wild is kind of just in the wilderness, nature. And so in a normal context in English, wildfire means that a, there's a fire that occurs in nature. Um, and it spreads very quickly in the U.S. So this is a specific fire that spreads very quickly in the U.S. And so when you say that something spreads like wildfire, it means that it gets really big very quickly. And so what are things that spread like wildfire a lot? Rumors. So a lot of times in school, People will say that that rumor spread like wildfire. So if maybe your best friend now started dating the most popular guy in school, that rumor about your best friend dating that guy is going to spread like wildfire at school. So this comes out a lot in, I would say, media, also at schools, because this um, Rumors spread a lot in schools and in media, so also when celebrities start dating, those rumors spread like wildfire. So these are kind of my top five idioms. I hope that each of these were helpful for you guys. I know it gets a little bit confusing with a lot of different 
um, phrases that sound like they mean the same thing, but they don't. So just remember guys that a lot of times overall, fire means something very passionate. So a lot of times they have to do with emotions. Um, they can be both negative and good, as we saw with putting out a fire, meaning that there was a problem, but and also meaning with playing with fire, meaning that there was a problem, but, but there's also some positives, like a lot of energy, like setting the stage on fire, or being on fire when you have a lot of passion and success. So I hope this was helpful. You guys may need to watch this video one more time to really get everything, but Americans do use these fire idioms a lot, so try to get your best um, head in the game when you're watching this because we do use these. So just practice using these with your American friends, even maybe with your British friends. They might know some of these too. So just keep practicing because that's the best way to learn. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. It was really fun. I hope I see you guys soon. So if you liked this video or even didn't like this video, just click that subscribe button here so you can see some more that you may like in the future. And then if you want to see any of my other videos, then just click over here. There's going to be some links. And so thank you again and see you next time. Bye.